welcome back we'll continue our class on antihistaminic agents in the previous video we have seen the chemistry of histamine its physiological role where it acts etc and in this video we'll be seeing about antihistaminic agents antihistaminic agents are also known as h1 receptor antagonist they inhibit the action of histamine at the h1 receptors they are reversible competitive h1 receptor antagonist they have predominant action on h1 receptors and not at the h2 receptors they blocks the action of histamine at the h1 receptors now coming to the general uses of h1 antagonist or antihistamines we know that histamine is the mediator of allergy so antihistamines are used in the treatment of allergic conditions like urticaria hay fever asthma rhinitis etc they also have sedative and antiemetic property and hence they are used in the treatment of motion sickness vomiting etc and they are also used as antipruritic that is against itching now antihistamines in general depending upon the year of introduction they can be classified into first generation antihistamines or older antihistamines and second generations or newer antihistamines as per your syllabus you have only first generation antihistamines and so we'll see the chemistry of first generation antihistamines so before seeing the classification of first generation antihistamines we'll see the general structure of first generation antihistamines so what you see on the screen is the general structure of antihistamines first generation antihistamines so essentially all the antihistamines have three parts one is a tertiary aliphatic amino group and then second one is the aromatic ring system connected by a connecting atom to the tertiary nitrogen atom through a ethyl side chain the nitrogen atom that is the aliphatic nitrogen atom or the amino group is a tertiary one and usually it contains two methyl group dimethyl group attached to a ethyl chain so this this portion that is dime ethyl dimethyl amino group is common to all the first generation antihistamines now we'll return to the classification of antihistamines so as i have mentioned before antihistamines can be classified into first generation antihistamines or older agents and they have the main disadvantage of producing sedation or drowsiness sleepiness and hence newer agents or second generation antihistamines are developed and they are found to be less sedative a common example for a second generation antihistamine is cetracin not going to learn about the second generation antihistamines your syllabus as mentioned only the first generation antihistamines so we will see one of them first we will see the classification and then we will see the chemistry of those agents one by one first generation antihistamines are classified depending upon the connecting atom present so we have seen that all the first generation antihistamines have a common ethyl dimethyl amino group and they differ in the connecting atom and the aromatic ring system attached to that connecting atom okay so depending upon the x you can have we will get different classes of first generation antihistamines now if the x is an oxygen atom o then you will get a ether derivative ethers have a general formula r o r dash okay so you get a ether derivative so you can you can classify you can name this class of compound as 
amino alkyl ethers or as ethanol derivatives CH2, CH2, OH. So ethanol amine derivatives. Example for this class of compound is diphenhydramine. A brand name, common brand name of diphenhydramine is Benadryl. Okay, now if the connecting atom is N, nitrogen atom, then you will get N, CH2, CH2, N. Then in, the, in this case, you will have two nitrogen atoms, two amino groups. And it is two amino groups are connected by CH2, CH2 chain. So you have that class of compound is known as eth ethylene diamine derivatives. Okay, ethylene is CH2 double bond CH2. So the double bond is uh, saturated by the addition of two nitrogen atoms at the either ends. So you get eth ethylene diamine derivative. And example for this class of compound uh, is mepyramine. Next, if the connecting atom is a carbon, so you have one more carbon attached to the uh, ethyl chain, so it becomes a three carbon chain, propyl chain is attached. So you have, you will get a propyl amine derivative or you can call it as an alkyl amine derivative. Example is phenyramines, chlorpheniramine, phenyramine belongs to this class. Okay, in some cases, the aromatic ring system attached at the connecting atom may be fused together or may be attached together as in the case of phenothiacins. In phenothiacins, two benzene rings are connected together by a sulfur atom and a nitrogen atom. And then the, at the nitrogen atom, uh, ethyl chain di, ethyl chain containing a dimethyl amino group is attached. An example for a phenothiacin derivative is promethacin. So that is also another class. The fourth class of antihistaminic agent is phenothiazine derivatives. We will see the summary of classification of antihistaminic agents. So first one was the amino alkyl ethers. Ethers have a general formula ROR. Example was diphenhydramine. A brand name of one, is, one diphenhydramine is Benadryl. And then second one is ethylene diamine. So it contains N, CH2, CH2, N. Example is mepyramine. Then third one is the alkylamines or propylamine derivative. That is more common, phenyramine. Phenyramine, uh, the brand name is Avil, which is very common. Then chlorpheniramine, seed syrup is there, cough syrup, etc. And then the fourth one is the phenothiazin. Example is promethazin. And the miscellaneous class is cyproheptadiene. Okay, next we'll start with individual compound. The first class of compound is amino alkyl ethers. Example is diphenhydramine. So ethers have a general formula R O R dash. So here the two R attached to the oxygen atom is aliphatic. So you have an aliphatic ether. So if it is an aromatic ring attached to the oxygen atom, then you will get an aromatic ether. So the simplest ether is if the two R group is methyl, CH3O, CH3. So you get dimethyl ether or else you can also name it as CH3O that stands for methoxy. So methoxy methane and otherwise if one instead of one CH3 group, if it is CH3, CH2O, uh, CH3, then you get methoxyethane. Okay, so diphenhydramine is a methoxyethane derivative. That is, a ethyl group is attached to one side of the oxygen atom and a methyl group is attached on the other side. So CH3O stands for methoxy, so methoxyethane. And the, at the other end of the ethyl, ethyl ring, ethyl chain, 
a nitrogen atom is attached so it is a amine so ethyl amine okay so dimethyl group is there attached to the nitrogen atom so dimethyl amino ethyl and then on the methane part ch3 part two aromatic ring phenyl ring is attached so you have diphenyl ring attached to the methyl methyl carbon atom so you have diphenyl methoxy so the IUPAC name of diphenhydramine is 2-diphenyl. 2 stands for the second carbon of atom of the ethyl, uh, ethyl chain. And then 2-diphenyl methoxy NN dimethyl ethyl amine diphenhydramine. Now coming to the uh, physical properties of diphenhydramine hydrochloride diphenhydramine is used in acids hydrochloride salt so as you can see in the figure it is a white crystalline odorless powder the, the melting point of diphenhydramine is 168 degree and it is very soluble in water the aqueous solution has a pH of about 4 to 6 it is freely soluble in chloroform and ethanol, uh, practically insoluble in ether. That's about the physical properties of diphenhydramine. Moving on, we'll see the chemical properties of diphenhydramine. Uh, to the aqueous solution of diphenhydramine, concentrated hydrochloric acid is added, an intense yellow color is formed, and when Concentrated nitric acid is added to it. The yellow color changes to red. Then the mixture is cooled, mixed with water and chloroform is added and shaken. And then an intense violet color is formed in the chloroform layer. And this reaction is used for the identification of diphenhydramine. Now coming to the stability and storage of diphenhydramine. Diphenhydramine is affected by light. It slowly darkens on exposure to light and hence it should be stored in well closed light resistant containers. And finally coming to the uses of diphenhydramine. It is an antihistaminic. It is an H1 receptor antagonist, so it is used in the treatment of allergic conditions, uh, urticaria, bronchial asthma, rhinitis, pruritus, etc. It is a common ingredient in many cough mixtures and it is also used as antiemetic to prevent vomiting. It can also be used to treat symptoms of Parkinsonism, etc. And the the main disadvantage it is a first generation antihistamine so it is uh, the side effect is a sedation it produces sedation and drowsiness if you check the label of those drugs containing this diphenhydramine you can see that a warning is given it, it can cause sedation so use with caution when driving or when working with the machinery So that's all about diphenhydramine. We'll see other drugs in the next video. Thank you.